Hello students of grade 10, my name is Ms. Nisha Bamfield and I will be your Principles of Business tutor for today. In today's lessons, we will be discussing the factors of production as it relates to goods and services. Our lesson objectives are to identify factors in the production of goods and services, to identify industries developed from the natural resources of the Caribbean territories and C, to differentiate between production and productivity. Factors. Factors of production are the resources people use to produce goods and services. They are the building blocks of the economy. Economists divided the factors of production into four distinct categories. These categories are land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship. Let us now define those four categories of production. Land. Land is referred to the resources that are available for production, the raw goods necessary to make or manufacture an item. Labor is referred to as the human input into the production process, workers who convert the raw goods into procedures and products for use. Capital. Capital goods are those goods used in the supply of products, infrastructure, factories, buildings, machinery, and any other aids that will lead to the final product of the manufacturing process. Entrepreneurship. These are individuals who bring the finished products to the market. Entrepreneurs invest their own capital and take the risk that the whole process will be yielding at a profit at the end result. Land. Land includes any natural resource used to produce goods and services. However, not just land, but anything that comes from the land. Some common land or natural resources are water, oil, copper, natural gas, coal, and forest. Land resources are the raw materials in the production process. These resources can be renewable such as forests or non-renewable, such as oil or natural gas. The income that comes from these resources are earned in return for land, and these resources are called rent. Labor. Labor is the effort that people contribute to the production of goods and services. Labor resources include the work done by the waiter who brings your food at a local restaurant, as well as the engineer who designed the bus that transport you to school. It includes an artist's creation of a painting, as well as the work of the pilot flying an airplane overhead. If you have ever been paid for a job, you have contributed labor resources to the production of goods or services. The income earned by labor resources is called wages and is the largest source of income for most people. Capital. Think of capital as the machinery, tools, and buildings human use to produce goods and services. Some common examples of capital include hammers, forklifts, conveyor belts, computers, and delivery vans. Capital differ based on the worker and the type of work being done. For example, a doctor may use a stethoscope and an examination room to provide medical services. Your teacher may use textbooks, a desk, and a whiteboard to produce education services. The income earned by owners of capital is known as interest. 
An entrepreneur is a person who combines the other factors of production, such as land, labor, and capital, to earn a profit. The most successful entrepreneurs are innovators who find new ways to produce or develop goods and services to bring to the market. Without the entrepreneur combining land, labor, and capital in new ways, many of the innovators we see around us in the world today may not have existed. Entrepreneurs are a valid engine of income growth helping to build some of the largest firms and small businesses. Entrepreneurs thrive in economies where they have the freedom to start businesses and buy resources freely. The payment for entrepreneurs is profit, money. You will notice that money was not included as a factor of production. You might ask, isn't money a type of capital? Money is not capital. As economists defined capital, because it is not productive resource, while money can be used to buy capital, it is the capital good, things such as machinery and tools that is used to produce goods and services. When was the last time you saw a carpenter pounding a nail with a $5 bill? or a warehouse foreman lifting a pallet with a $20 bill. Money merely facilitates trade, but it is not in itself a productive resource. Let us turn our attention to goods and services. Remember, goods and services are scarce because the factors of production used to produce them are scarce. In case you have forgotten, Scarcity is described as limited quantities of resources to meet unlimited wants. Consider a pair of denim blue jeans. The denim is made of cotton grown on the land. The land and water are used to grow the cotton, is limited and could have been used to grow a variety of different crops. The workers who cut and sew the denim in the factory are limited labor resources who could have been producing other goods or services in the economy. Machinery and the factory used to produce the jeans are limited capital resources that could have been used to produce other goods as well. This scarcity of resources means that producing some goods and services leaves other goods and services unproduced. Question. It is time for me to test your knowledge with a little game called Name That Resource. I will say the name of an item and you will identify it as one of the four possible resources that form the factors of production, which are land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship. Coal or gold? If your response is land, then you are correct. A forklift. If you said capital, you are also correct. Steve Jobs. If you refer to him as an entrepreneur, that is correct. Factory. If you said capital, that is also correct. Cash at bank. Yes, that is money, and it is not a factor of production. Oil or stones? Oil. 
it is referred to as land, and that is also correct. And finally, John Fernandez. If you said an entrepreneur, then that is correct. Thank you for your responses. Now we will focus in depth on industries developed from the natural resources of the Caribbean. By international standards, minerals most valuable on the international market are found in Cuba, Jamaica, Trinidad and Tobago. Several nations of the Caribbean are rich in natural resources, including Trinidad's vast natural gas and oil reserves, Jamaica, bauxite, and recently the discovery of Guyana's large oil field. The resources that make significant contributions to the domestic economies and regional job sectors include fisheries, agriculture, forestry, mining, and oil, and gas, not to name a few, bauxite, iron, nickel, petroleum, and timber. It has been noted by some that the Caribbean's most important resource is its tropical island setting, which has generated an important tourism sector. The attention by regional government towards economic diversification in the early 90s is often associated with increased production in tourism, oil, and nickel, spurred by foreign investment in these primary industries. St. Vincent, known for the Ararat production. The industry started as a food and medicine of the Carib and Garifuna peoples and developed to the status of major export of St. Vincent during the period of the 1900s to the 1965. The plant is propagated from raisin and cultivation takes place at elevations of up to 300 meters on the eastern and windward facing side of the highlands of St. Vincent. Cultivation covers an area of about 3,700 hectares, and some 80% of the crop is grown by small farmers. Guyana Sugar Cooperation. The Guyana Sugar Cooperation, best known by its acronym GAISUCO, is a Guyanese sugar company owned by the government. It is the country's largest cultivator and producer of sugar a commodity responsible for approximately 20% of Guyana's natural and annual revenue and 40% of all agricultural production, and notable for selling Demawara sugar, honey, and sweeteners. One of its noted products is brown sugar produced in the Demawara River Basin and exported internationally to the European Union, the United States of America and the Caribbean community, also known as CARICOM. Asphalt of Trinidad and Tobago. The industry is located at the Pitch Lake at the town of Labru in southwestern Trinidad, gaining a reputation for itself as the world's largest deposit. The Pitch Lake is considered a tourist attraction and attracts about 20,000 visitors annually. The asphalt industry is the second most important mining activity after petroleum. The industry is a government-owned state enterprise. This natural deposit of asphalt or pitch is of volcanic origin. The lake covers about four to six acres or hectares of its reported to be 76 meters deep with a maximum of 87 meters in the center. Deposits are estimated to be 6.1 million tons. The coffee industry of Jamaica. Jamaica Blue Mountain coffee is a classification of coffee grown in the Blue Mountains of Jamaica. The coffee was introduced to Jamaica in 1728. 
The Bean is located between Kingston to the south of Port Antonio to the north, rising to 2,256 meters, which amounts to 7,402 feet. They are some of the highest mountains in the Caribbean. Over the past few decades, this coffee has developed a reputation that has made it one of the most expensive and sought after coffee in the world. Over 80% of all Jamaican Blue Mountain coffee is exported to Japan. Suriname, aluminum, oxide, and gold. The backbone of Suriname's economy is the export of aluminum oxide, also known as alumina. A small amount of aluminum produced from bauxite mined in the country. In addition to which, there is one large-scale gold mine operating in Serna. This is the Rosbell Gold Mine. Development of a second large-scale mine called the Mirian Gold Project was approved by the government of Suriname on June 7, 2013. The Miriam Gold Project is about 60 kilometers or 40 miles south of the town of Minego on the Marudrin River. Question. An input could be any of the four factors of production, while the output could be revenue or industry. True or false? If you said true, then that is correct. Let me explain. Productivity as a business term is the measure of output per unit input. The overall goal is an efficient productive company is to maximize output for input. Land, labor, and capital can be limited and scarce. So a highly productive company will be able to make the absolute most out of the resources or input it has. Differentiating between production and productivity. Production is the process of creating, growing, manufacturing, or improving goods and services. It also refers to the quantity produced. Production is the step-by-step -step transformation process of inputs into outputs having desired utility and quality. Production refers to absolute output. Production is value addition process. Production may rise without the corresponding rise in productivity. That is, increase in production may or may not be an indicator of increase in productivity. Productivity. Productivity in economics means productivity is used to measure the efficiency or rate of production. It is the amount of output, that is, number of goods produced per unit of input, example, labor, equipment, and capital. Productivity is defined as human effort to produce more and more with less and less input of resources. Productivity is a relative term where the output is always expressed in terms of input. Productivity is efficiency of production systems. Productivity may rise without the corresponding rise in product. That is, increase in productivity may or may not be an indicator of increase in production. Consider the following. Let us assume that a scooter manufacturing company was producing 500 vehicles per day. Its output is increased to 600 vehicles per that day as well. Then the production of the company is increased, but this is not assured that the productivity is also increased. This is because the productivity considers the increase in inputs to achieve this increase in output. 
In the above example, the productivity will be increased if increase in number of vehicles from 500 to 600 vehicles are produced, which is a difference of 100, is achieved without increasing the inputs or with little increase in inputs. If the input, for some reason, results in output arise at slower rate than the input, there will be a fall in the productivity even though there is a rise in production or exercise. So we have come to the end of our lesson on factors of production. It is expected that at the end of this lesson, you will produce the following responses in your notebooks. Here are the lesson exercise for today. Number one, define the term natural resources in your own words. Identify and provide information about three other Caribbean countries that have developed industries from natural resources in about 75 words each. Number two, wedding cake designers mainly use job production system. Describe in no more than 150 words each three advantages and three disadvantages of this system. And number three, State the factors of production and list four examples of each that are found in your country. Thank you for having me and thank you for paying rapt attention. My name is Miss Nisha Bamfield and I was happy to be your tutor for today.